Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how you can use a single Excel function to produce a sum using multiple criteria regardless of the version of Excel that you're using. So let me switch over here to Excel 2010. We can use the sum ifs function, which is a new function introduced in Excel 2007. So if you're using Excel 2007, Excel 2010, you can use the brand new sum ifs function. Well, what if you haven't yet upgraded to Excel 2007, 2010, or you need to produce this formula and send it to clients or colleagues who are using an older version? The dsum function will allow you to use multiple criteria to sum a range regardless of the version of Excel that you're using. All right, let's look at dsums. Over here in cell H4, I'm using sum ifs. Now, the syntax is that I'm going to sum a range. Now, as you know, I'm a strong advocate of using named ranges for my Excel workbook so that I can use them in formulas. So I've created a name range called made. This is the quantity that I want to sum based upon a pair of the criteria range and the criteria for that range. So for criteria range number one, I want to look in this name range month to find the criteria, which is this value. So I want to look for the records that match this criteria January in criteria range number one month. Use comma to separate the argument. So my second criteria range will be over here. It's the product uh, range. I've used the name product to identify this range and the criteria that I wish to search for in that range is over here pointing to this cell. Now let's see how this works from scratch. And I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this value from January to be February. And I want to change the product from mixer number nine to be mixer number two. So let's use equal sum ifs. And again, remember it's the plural. So the range that I want to search in is the name range made. Since I've used names, I can use the keyboard shortcut F3 to bring up a list of the names that I wish to paste into the formula. Use a comma to separate. Again, the key to understanding this is we're going to be pairing the name of the criteria range with the criteria in that range. So for criteria range number one, the name range is going to be month. F3 list of the name ranges, select month, comma, and then let's point to the value which will serve as the criteria. For the second pair, the criteria range will be product. So I want to use again F3 to bring up a list of the names, select product, use a comma, and then point over here to see the value. And now let's use the control enter to keep the entry in this cell. So I can see that 23 units were made in the month of February for mixer number two. One way that we can verify that is come up here to the data tab of the ribbon and use filter. In this case, let's filter for a specific month, the month of February in this field. And for our second criteria, let's filter for mixer number two and I should get 23. So if I add up these values, if I come down here into the status bar, I can see it's 23. A great keyboard shortcut in Excel 2007-2010, Control Shift L removes the filter and the filter drop down label. So there you go, 23. Now let's see how the dsum function works because you can use the sum function to be compatible with all versions of Excel. So let's switch over here to Excel 2003. I've made an exact duplicate of the data set from uh, the data that I was using in Excel 2010. Up here I have the criteria. Now a tip is to make an exact copy of the labels. The easiest way to do that is to make a reference. So equal and create a link to the label for your data set as the label for your criteria. And then simply type in the criteria that you wish to use. 
Over here, I'm going to be using the dsum function. And when I use dsum, or as you saw when I use sum ifs, I like to create labels over here to show which values I'm using as the criteria for the field. So in this case, let's break this down. With dsum, there are three arguments. Now, dsum is part of what's called the database functions. For example, you have dsum, d average, d average a, a d max, d min. And the nice thing is that all of them use the same syntax. The key to understanding the database, and again, notice that I'm using a name range, is that with the database functions, what you're using for your data table is you're creating a range that includes the labels as well as the values. So if I come up here into the name range, the data table that I'm using over here uses the labels for the data as well as the actual values. That is very different than when you're creating a name range that you use, for example, in a VLOOKUP function where you include the values but not the labels. So that's going to be your first gotcha step. Let's come over here now and take a look at the second argument. The second argument is the point to the field that you wish to, in this case, sum. There are several ways to do that. I find the easiest way to do that is to just point and make a link to the label for the field that you wish to use the summarize for the dsum function. And the final argument is to point to the criteria. So A3 through B4 is over here. So when you include the label as well as the values, that's very similar to when we were using the sum if, the range that we're going to be looking in as well as the value for our first criteria, our second criteria range, and the criteria for the second criteria range. So there you go. Now let's change this. Let's make this uh, February. Uh, how about if we do it March? So I use Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. Now again, remember these are simply the labels. What I really need to do is change over here in the criteria. So I'll change that, Control C, Control V. So now what we're doing is we're looking inside this database, which includes the label, for the field that we wish to summarize, which is made. And the criteria that we're using is over here, the label and the criteria for criteria range number one, the label for criteria range number two, as well as the criteria. So it's really very, very, very simple. Now, one way that you can enhance what you've learned here is to actually create a drop-down list of selections. So over here, I've extracted the unique values for the month. I've extracted the unique values for the product. Now, let me come through and create different range names. Now, I already have a name range called month. As you can see over here, I've, that's this range over here. So selecting these values, I want to create a new name range over here called months, plural, and hit Enter. And over here, again, remember that I have a name range called product that I've used in the formula. So what I want to be able to do over here is select these values and make it a plural name. So come over here to the name range, uh, name, um, name box, and call it products, and hit enter. Now I'm going to use data validation. So data tab on the ribbon, uh, data validation. In this case, what I want to do is I want to, in the allow, select from a list the list, and again I'll use F3. So I want to be able to select from the plural, months, click OK. Over here for the product, once again, data tab on the ribbon, data validation, and allow from a list. I want to select the source for the list, F3, in this case I want to use products, plural, click OK. So now I can go through and select any combination over here and select mixer uh, number two. Oh, I've got to find one value where that has a value in there. So for March and mixer number six, you see that I don't have a mixer for every month. And there you go. So now you've learned how to be able to select
a function that will summarize one field based upon multiple criteria from uh, two di or more different fields. And that's typical of the tips that I offer on my DVD-ROM, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007, which you can find at my online uh, website, shop.thecompanyrocks.com. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.